to you from the home of Daniel Pearl, the journalist who's been kidnapped in Pakistan. This climate of terrorism, was this was really the beginning of it, and this is something that really kicked off a series of of uh, more, uh, you know, just kind of continuing worse uh, events. Mayan's book is a very powerful book. I felt that her version of what it was like to be in Pakistan had been quite similar to my experience as an outsider in Pakistan. Both her reaction to, to what was happening as it was happening and then the way in which she described it in the book is a surprise. I was incredibly taken with it. I mean, I think it's both this beautiful representation of this relationship and these two remarkable people and then also um, deals, frankly, with with both the brutality of the situation that they found themselves in as well as the, the, the beauty and, and sort of amazing nature of that of the country that they were in, in Pakistan, and, and the humanity there. It's not so much a film about celebrating his life as it is about what she's going through and how tough and hard that must have been. She, to me, was just probably one of the best examples that we have in the world today of somebody who can keep us all on the right path and not get distracted. I have a name for him. You do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Adam. Adam. She is an example of somebody who suffered the, the, the ugliest side of, of, of what is going on in the world today. And she came out of it with a sense of, we have to continue to have a dialogue. We have to continue to understand each other. We cannot just be angry and blinded by hatred. I'll call you. Leave your phone on. Okay. These people from such vastly different backgrounds came together, met each other at a party, and had this connection with each other. You, um, you make me happy every time you smile. We're going to create a beautiful world together. Tu es moi maintenant, et je suis toi. There's a lot of stuff that you can read that Danny wrote. His book has a collection of 50 or so of his articles from both the Wall Street Journal and earlier publications. And he was writing in Massachusetts and North Adams. That felt to me important to read as much as I could of his writing, and you get a sense of his interest in and passion for people. I spoke with as many people as I could in the amount of time I had who knew him, either professionally or personally, including his mother and father, who were incredibly gracious to sit down with me in, in what I'm sure was a painful meeting for them, and Marianne, who spent as much time with me as I wanted. Hey, baby. Hey, where are you? I'm at the supermarket. Yeah, how are you? How was your day? It was all right. They didn't tell me much. Watch out here, baby. So what, what time will you be back? I'm still, I'm hoping 9 o'clock. I mean, I'm like sitting in a parking lot right now, but hopefully we'll get moving. And I'm, I'm still hoping 9 o'clock. Listen, I love you. Love you. I think it was a continuing source of excitement and amazement between the two of them. And as they explore the world, that brought their different experiences to that relationship. The American consulate, Corporal Bailey speaking. How can I help you? Hello, my name is Marianne Pearl. And um, I'm calling because my, my husband is missing. He's a journalist. And he was... Uh, um, Ma'am, I'm afraid the consulate is closed at the moment. was a really close friend of Danny's, but, but didn't know Marianne that well. So what you have is two people who had only really met on two occasions before this took place, suddenly being thrown into this incredible situation. I found the email uh, setting up Danny's meeting with Jelani. His contact is uh, Imtiaz Siddiq. There's another number of them. His brother's mobile. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, where was it? No, this line, this line is disconnected as well. Oh, it's not working. Marianne and Azra, two strong women who probably were, would not have become as close as they did out of this tragedy. They were both in Danny's life, but both occupied different parts of his life. Give me Daddy's cookie. They are two women who, when this situation began, they knew each other a little, but, but not very well. And they're also both very strong, very independent women who I think a lot of women today would relate to. There's an email from the kidnappers. The National Movement for the Restoration of Pakistan Sovereignty has captured CIA officer Daniel Pearl, who has been posing as a journalist of the Wall Street Journal. 
Unfortunately, he is at present being kept in very inhuman circumstances. If the Americans keep our countrymen in better conditions, we will better the conditions of Mr. Pearl and all other Americans that we capture. Hello. Have you seen them? The photos of Danny? Yes. It's good news, Marianne. Yes. 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 It's, uh... it's alive. Yes, of course he's alive. I met her in Washington. She took me to the Wall Street Journal. And she took me to places where Danny Pearl had stayed, where they used to hang out. No. I don't think so. You see that? He's smiling. He has a gun to his head. And he's smiling. And he's telling me he's okay. I think they are both strong characters, but I have this theory that I think all women have that ability to be strong in those situations. So you always think that you're going to break down when you are about to hit tragedy or when you're going through a tough period. But I think women do have this really strong ability to deal with a situation like that. It's like they go straight into crisis mode. Who's Aaron? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? How did you meet him? I got his number from a friend of mine. Okay, so who's the friend? I can't tell you. You can't tell us. Why is that? Is that because they paid you for Danny? I mean, like, how much did they pay you for Danny? I don't think you understand how serious this is, huh? Azra was a doctor. She's trained as a doctor. She studied medicine. And her way of dealing with things was to have the facts and to have, you know, all these little diagrams, flow charts, tree diagrams. So as soon as we started to accumulate all these different pieces of information, um, she just instinctively went into that mode of getting, gathering all this information and trying to put things down. It is very important to try to make sense out of things which is going on in Pakistan. It's, it's difficult to track a person in, and it's a political situation. It, 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 it is difficult and uh, the way these two women, you know, tried to uh, make a map out of it. This map that the character Azra has drawn and for me, it's like a um, schizophrenic spider's web, you know, just like going all over the place. They still need to find Arif, the go between Bashir in Rawalpindi, and Tia Siddiqui here in Karachi, and Jelani, wherever he is. And Danny. And Danny. The significance of the charts, in a way, was that you start off thinking that the chart is going to reveal a pattern that allows you to understand what's gone on and eventually reveals the people who did it and, and the, their relationship to each other, maybe even why they did it. And that at some point, it seems to me that at some point you should feel, actually, you know what, this chart is just showing that you're never going to understand it. In reality, it was a sheet of paper um, that grew bigger and bigger, but that was just too complicated to film, so we got a board to reflect that. Of course, it becomes very complicated, but that's, I think, the toughest job for me is to go through and know all those facts off by heart, you know, know who the people are, what they stood for, when this happened. So in a way, the board kind of helps me as an actress as well as the character, that all the details are there, and it just gets bigger and bigger and more complicated. For women, it's also a, a very important story, I think, and, and they're very smart women, they're very capable women. So they're, they're as a pair, they're, their friendship and their... Um, their relationship as women, I think, will be great for women to see. I like the fact that you, you held yourself together. You wouldn't know her husband's been kidnapped for six days. I think it was an amazing piece of fortune in a way that they were both strong and, and, and were able to kind of feed off the strength of each other, really. You meet Marianne, she talks about Captain, she has a lot of affection, and very, he has a very sort of special place, I think, uh, for Marianne. At the same time, you know, obviously, in terms of the story, it's quite hard to sort of structure um, that in the story because, in a way, in the book, Marianne describes, like, as soon as, really from the first day, that she puts her trust in Captain and, you know, and that, and that, that is rewarded and, you know, Captain is a good person's trust. I need your support. I need your help. We have Danny's computer. Okay. Can I see it? I'll go and get it. Because of the time we're living in, because of what this story means, the relationship with Captain, I think, the kind of triangle between Danny, this Jewish man, and Captain, who studies Islam and lives in Pakistan, and Marianne, who's Buddhist, this triangle of these two people that love each other and this man who's trying to help them, the importance of that and why that's, you know, so obvious today. Now, the important thing is, Hashim also goes by the name of Arif. Arif. Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah. Beautiful photograph of Arif. 
but his family claims he died in Afghanistan. What? <laughs> he told Danny he was going to catch me. Exactly. Was there a body? No, there's no body. We do not believe he's necessarily dead. Hearing Marianne talk about the captain, it really is. It's, it's such an interesting thing because it's like she comes to study and learn about Pakistan. At